In this video, we're going to create a progress bar inside of a project manager. And what I mean is we're going to track the progress of projects that happen to be connected to tasks. So as you take away tasks connected to a particular project, we'll be able to track the progress of that project from 0% to 100. If you are starting with part two, you'll totally be able to follow along, especially if you duplicate the page in the description and follow along with me. This is the page you guys will be able to see down below in the description to duplicate into your workspace and follow along. Now down here at the bottom, I have a section for project progress bar. If you came from part one, habits progress bar, it's in the same page. So we're going to create a progress bar inside of the projects pages and we're gonna determine the progress of which this project is at in relation to its subordinate tasks and which of them are finished. So you'll notice inside of projects, we have the name of the project, tasks associated and the progress bar we're going to create. Now tasks is linking to another database using a property called the relation property and you can create a new property in any database table via this plus button. And what I've done essentially is we're inside of projects. I went, okay, I want to know my subtasks for each project. And I have a table full of my tasks. So I'm going to go and connect to it by choosing type down in advanced under formula relation. Now I'm asked to point to the database I want to connect to, in this case would be tasks. I click on it and I've made my connection. So that's what I'm seeing here. And once you've made a relationship connection inside of each cell, you can create a window into the connected database and choose an available task connected to this project or create a new one. create new page. Now, if I click through to this new page, I'm no longer inside of my projects database, but instead inside of my tasks. And inside of tasks, I have the name of the task, the project it is connected to, and a done checkbox. So to find the progress of a project, all I need inside of my task database is a checkbox. So let's go back to projects. So if you came from part one, you know that you need some sort of percentage to create a progress bar. With this rollup property, I'm going to click this plus button. I'm going to call it percent done type. So instead of calculating a percentage, we are going to roll it up. Rollup is under relation under advanced. Now all a rollup needs is a relation property, which we now have and I'm going to choose the relation tasks. Now I'm going to go to property and find that done checkbox inside of tasks, which I can grab. And then I have a calculate option where I'm going to find the percent checked. And what's really neat is we now have this nice percentage and I can use it inside of this progress bar. This progress bar is a formula property and a formula property is just another type of property in that long list of properties to choose from under advanced. So inside of progress, what I want to do is use a formula function called slice. And there's going to be a video down in the description more about slice. Inside of this formula pop-up window, I have actually a list of functions that you can choose from. And we are specifically going to just use slice here. Now inside of slice, how it's set up is you need a string. And what I wanna do is slice certain characters out of that string. And to specify the coordinates inside, I'm going to have a start index number and an end index number. Now inside of these quotes, I'm going to have the symbols that I want to use inside of the progress bar. And at the top of the page, I have two sets of symbols. And above, you'll see what we want our end product to look like. 
So at the front, I want the filled squares to fill up the progress bar. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, go back to the formula, and paste it inside of these quotations. It should be 10 filled squares. Now the reason I'm using slice is this end index number, if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10, because there are 10 characters, that progress bar will extend. And what I want to do is replace this end index number with a calculation. I'm going to create a temporary formula called temp type formula. And I'm going to figure out how to get that number. So first, I just want to see how percent done is displayed in a formula. So we have all these functions down on the left hand side of a pop up window, but at the top, we also have a list of properties in this table to work with. So I can press my percent done and see what I'm working with. So it doesn't exactly look like this cell. And that's good that I know that now. So if I want to find a number between 0 and 10, I'd probably have to multiply this by 10. And now we have 3 instead of 0.33. So I can actually use this formula now, copy that to my clipboard, and replace 10, delete, paste it in, with it. Now, if you did come from my last video, you'll know that anything below 10% is going to give you a blank cell, and we can fix that by creating an if statement. But we'll do that in a moment. First, let's look at how to add on these empty squares at the end. So if there are three squares here, I want to see seven empty squares at the end to create 10 full squares, and that'll give us a better understanding of where this progress bar is. So inside of temp, I am going to erase this and I'm going to create another slice function, zero, zero. And I'm gonna go up here and grab these 10 empty squares, copy it to my clipboard and paste it inside of that slice function. So like before we have one, two, three for the end index number and it goes up. But I want to do the opposite. I want it to go down. So instead of having 0, 7, I'll just have one number, 7. If that's the case, it should give me three empty squares. If I have one, it should give me 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, 4, 6, and so on. So that's exactly what I need. What I want to do is replace this 4 just with that 10 multiplied by the percent done again. Now I want to combine them. So I'm going to copy the temp formula, go into progress, and just say plus that slice function. And I'm able to tack on this other formula because they are both string. So I can just add them next to each other via this plus symbol. Okay, so I'm going to just delete temp inside of the formula box and bring it over here for now. And now we have that problem, right? Anything below 10% is going to give us zero squares because we needed a number between one and 10, but zero would give us nothing. So for that, I need to create an if statement. And I am going to use the temporary formula for this to show you how it works. What the if statement does is solve problems for you in a formula. If I have the problem that every percentage under 10% is not showing up in my progress bar, I can fix it with the if statement. So I can say if percent done is less than 0.1 or less than 10%, then true condition, otherwise false condition. And I'm going to close that out. Inside of this formula, I can say, if it's the case, give me one filled square plus nine empty squares. If it's not the case, I just want to perform this function, this slice function. So I can copy this from progress, go back into temp, 
And instead of this false condition being an empty quote, I can just paste in the progress formula. So we have if property percent done is less than 10%, just give one block. Otherwise, slice our filled blocks plus our empty blocks. That is the final formula, which means I don't really need progress anymore. You'll notice in temp, even for 0%, we have at least one block filled. And for empty rows, it does remain empty. So what I can do is just delete progress and rename temp to progress. Great. Now I want to tack on this percentage to the end of my progress bar like we have up here in the example. To do that, I'm gonna have to tack on my percent done. And if I click through to progress, because this result is text, it's a string, just like we connected the two slice functions together with a plus symbol, I could also do that here. I could say plus string or space. But I can't then say plus percent done because the number symbol here, it is a number. So we'll have an error that says type mismatch prop percent done is not text. We can actually convert this into text though. So format would just be format with a lowercase f, open parentheses and close at the end. So it's sort of nesting this property. And now we can see it. Now inside of format, I can still make some calculations because it is a number inside of the format function. So I could say 100 times. Now I do need to round this number down. I'm going to round it down with the floor function, wrap it around all of this, and then plus the percentage sign. So that's pretty much it. Now from here, it's a bit redundant. We have the percent done property and the percentage with the progress bar. What I can do here is simply hide in view I would not delete this property though, because we are using it inside of our progress bar formula. So what is the best way to visualize all of this? Yes, we see a nice progress bar, but this is still a little bit clunky. What's the best way to click off tasks and see this progress bar extend? What I recommend doing is creating an empty page and linking these databases inside of it. So let's go back to the progress bars homepage and we can do that inside of the body of this page. I'll probably have a divider here and below the divider, let's create this mock dashboard page. So firstly, I want to link to tasks and to do that, I'm gonna go to the block menu of tasks and copy its link. I'm gonna paste it inside the body of this page and create a linked view of the database. If you're familiar with other programs that are similar, it's like embedding the database. So create linked view, and I can choose the view that is from the original or create an empty view. Let's create an empty one, make it a simple list, like a checklist. And view name will be called checklist. Done. I can go to properties and make sure I see the done checkbox so I can click them off as I go. So the goal is, is as I'm clicking these away, I'm seeing my progress bars go up. So up here at the top, I'm gonna to create a new block below the divider. And now I'm going to link to projects, copy link, and paste inside of the page. Again, create a linked view of database and let's make this a gallery view. So new empty view and gallery. Card preview, none. Card size, small. Okay, done. Now inside of properties, we saw that checkbox property inside of the tasks list. For this one, I wanna see the progress bar. Click away, probably delete that one and the top task we created before. And let's just take a look at this. My projects above, and my tasks below. And as I tick them away, I can see my project progressing. 
Now, if you're brand new to Notion and you're a little confused by linked database views and if they affect the original, let's go back into projects. And you'll notice that it looks exactly like it did before. Just because we created a linked database view or an embed of this table and created new views to look at it, it does not change the original. The only thing that changes the original is if you created a new project in this linked view. New project. Then in that case, if I were to go back to the original, that new project would be added. So that's about it. Um, I hope this was informative. Uh, if you wanted to know more about using rollups in progress bars, and let's just go right into the outro. This little mini series was a lot of fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed it. These are kind of very similar ways to create a progress bar. They're both structurally very similar, but one uses a calculation in a separate property while this uses the rollup property. If you want to get more into formulas, I did make a video all about the slice function that we used in the past two videos. So you can check that out down in the description. And if you haven't already seen part one about how to create a progress bar in a habit tracker, you can also find that in the description. Anyway, I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.